Rick Delarada, you are the founder of jazzforpeace.org. Welcome to Listen With Leaders, and you have something special for us. Go for it, man. Okay, thank you so much. Sunday kind of love Love to last past Saturday night I'd like to know It's more than love at first sight I want a Sunday I love it. Thank you. Thanks. Nice piece of blues. Yeah, well, it was what it was was it's uh it was a you know a standard that hopefully would draw somebody in because it's familiar called the Sunday kind of love version recorded by Etta James. Just any standard will do really just right. to draw the people in. And then I kind of want to take them on some sort of a journey of something that I make up on the spot, completely unique to your show. No one could ever hear. That. I could never play it again if I tried because <laughs> I don't know what I did. And someone would have to come to this podcast to hear it. And I basically, uh, it's called free jazz is what they labeled this kind of improvisation. It really took hold in the 1960s. Uh, people like Cecil Taylor and uh, a lot of people, a loft scene in, in New York took place where people would do these spontaneous improvisations. Um, 
I call it Free J.A., and that's because I ended up doing a concert in uh, Haiti with Jazz for Peace, where they said, welcome Jazz for Peace, J-A-S-S, which is the real spelling of jazz. It's a Creole word. Huh. And, uh, you know, Haitians, uh, were they came from Ghana right. to Haiti to New Orleans, where they were the ones who were listening to jazz, because as you know, when music is evolving, there's no, you know, socialites gathering around listening to the involvement of a, you know, innovative music, especially one that's, you know, might be outing people with the truth and its sounds. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, the people, the Haitian people called it jazz, J-A-S-S. We took that name, misspelled it. So I took the Z's off because that, you know, was misspelled. I took the S's off because nobody knows it's, that's the real spelling anyway. Right. Now I have free J-A, which is something that I want to stand for as Jazz for Peace. We want to, you know, we want to um, uh, really let the world know that we've got to keep our rights. And one of those rights is for journalists to report what they see uh, and do their job. Uh, you know, we can't obviously, uh, you know, the bombing of civilians, things of that nature, uh, we don't want to see at Jazz for Peace. I mean, you know, I can't I can't stand in favor of, of any kind of that kind of stuff. So Free J.A. is something that's been performed now over 50 times, both in concert and on all of these podcasts. So it's wow. very exciting. Lovely. Well, I told you before we started recording that I'm a jazz violinist. So this was a, yeah. a delight and a surprise. Thank you. <laughs> great. That's, that's so, great. Tell us about Jazz for Peace, how it started and what it does. So basically, Jazz for Peace started on the morning of 9-11. Wow. Yeah, basically, um, what happened was uh, I, I had a photo shoot on the 10th of September. And, you know, things were happening with my career was starting to kind of take off just because of the culmination of, you know, all of my journey as a sideman playing in well-known bands like the Artie Shaw Orchestra, uh, you know, uh, the Platters, opening act MC for Dizzy Gillespie, and of course, all kinds of other bands that, you know, nobody knows or remembers, but some of them amazing times, amazing moments. And then I was evolving as a leader because I had toured a lot, uh, you know, uh, in gigs where I mainly sang. And then I played a lot on gigs where I mainly was an instrumentalist. And I was combining those two things along with my compositions because I actually had a master's degree in jazz composition from the New England Conservatory. Um, so all these things kind of had to come together. I was starting to evolve as a leader. So I was traveling all over the world. You named the combination of all these things. And I was finding out, you know, the obvious, which is jazz really cuts art and jazz and music in general and the arts and culture really cut through barriers and uh, reach people in profoundly positive ways. So many good things come out of the communication of different cultures through music, through the arts and culture. And I was noticing all of these things and how it brings people together in, in positive ways and all that. And all of a sudden, uh, like I said, in the 10th, I had a photo situation where uh, photographers, and I don't know, most people here know it, but no, probably not everywhere they don't know. Uh, photographers will like kind of come up to you if they think maybe you're going to be famous someday and ask to take pictures. You get the pictures and they get the negatives in case something happens. That that becomes worth a lot of money to them. Uh, the story of Linda McCartney is a perfect one where she, you know, uh, people think, oh, you know, she met the Beatles. Well, she was actually a pretty famous photographer because she had walked around in, uh, you know, New York City taking pictures of Bob Dylan and those people. Anyway, a woman was doing that on the 10th, taking pictures of me. She called me up from her day job on Wall Street and said, hey, you know, I don't know who to call. You just popped into my mind because we had been taking, you know, I, I, she's all frazzled. I said, what is going on? It woke me up. I mean, I was, you know, this was the my morning wake up right here was this call. What is it? What's going on? Something crazy, blah, 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 with the World Trade Center. And the, the my, my boss's son is in the other building and he called my, uh, me and then I pushed him through to my, you know, to, to my boss. My boss and him talked and told him to get out of the other building. And now, you know, and I said, you know what, let me just go up and take a look because I was on the fifth floor walk up. So I was on the fifth floor and my roof was right here. And I just walked up on the roof. Little did I know I was one of so few people that was about to see what happened, you know? And yeah, so, so I literally walked up on the roof um, and I was within, I was less than a quarter of a mile away on the Lower East Side from the wow. World Trade Center, direct sighting. And I just watched the whole, every, and I just watched it from like a luxury box seat, you know? It was almost like, you know, you would have pay $500, maybe thousands of dollars now to watch if it was Yankee Stadium, the World Series, but except I had a luxury box seat to 9-11. 
And the only response that I had was words that just came out. You know, I didn't really struggle to write. I wasn't, I wasn't like Beethoven going, duh, 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 you know, 8,000 times. The words just kind of were, it was almost like my water broke. You know what I mean? I gave birth to all these words. So I just had these words. I called the poem Jazz for Peace and off we were to the rest. The rest is pretty mm -hmm. much history. One after another, after another. And, from there. And what does Jazz for Peace do today? Well, so, so basically, it's like I said, it started out as a poem. The first thing I did was recite the poem. So when when the, when the you know when the country opened up again, right when it opened up, boom! I was one of the first flights out of here because I had to get to um, Savannah, Georgia, for a jazz festival that I was the headliner on. So now I'm in front of I'm in front of eight thousand five hundred people, and I get to read a poem. I mean, you know, too bad Edgar Allan Poe never had any good fortune like this. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Yeah, I mean, those guys couldn't get, get there, but it's just boom, here I was. I'm not a poet, but I have a poem, you know, and I'm a lyricist, but now I have this poem. Well, that, you know, you can imagine the all of the, you know, what all of the emotions that came out of me reading that poem on stage, even the musicians playing with me were hearing it for the first time. And that resonated all the way from Savannah, all the way back up here where I had another concert. And those promoters called me and said, we heard about this poem and, you know, the press was calling. And, you know, are you going to put this to music for our show? You know, they were like put planting the seed, that seed in me, you know. And I said, hmm, maybe let me see what I can do. So while I was putting that to, I was putting that to music, I also was on a, uh, um, I also, uh, a reporter called me and he was just talking to me almost like it was a very casual conversation. I didn't know he was recording it. He says, hey, so, you know, what's this, uh, now you, this poem, what's blah, blah, blah. And we had us talk about a bunch of things. I, you know, like we're doing, we're talk like that, but he was recording it like you're recording it. And I happened to just say off the top of my head, you know, John or whatever his name is, I got to tell you something. If we just took our greatest qualities, you know, creativity, artistry, humanity, intellectuality, and we um, fill our souls up with these great qualities that we already have as a, if we use those qualities to fill up our soul, we would have a better chance at avoiding the behavior that leads to destruction. Well, that comes out in the article and that gets lifted. And it's just lifted out of the blue. I mean, it took off on all these uh, websites, uh, basically famous quotes websites. I didn't even know fame, I'd never been to a famous quote website, but I started seeing it in the months, even the years after, cause I just didn't really even believe that it was like, how could something like happen with me not having, cause you know, we try so hard in this world. Everyone I know tries, you know, you have dream, you try, we try so hard and get nowhere. You know what I mean? And I'm looking for something. Someone's called me, Hey, when were you in, can you send me some information about your last appearance? And I'm looking at them. I can't find what I'm looking for, but I see my favorite 50 quotes of all time and a little star to me, you know, on Google. What? And I click on that and there's this guy with, you know, Aldous Huxley, who I had never heard of, stupid me. I know who he is now because I now I've, I've read all these quotes myself, and these guys are amazing. All these great people, you know, whether it's Gandhi or you know Tesla or this one or that one, all their quotes, and mine is in there. I'm one of this guy's favorite quotes. I didn't even make the quote. I just said something off the top of my head, got recorded, got out in an article, and now it's a famous quote. So anyway, what it's always kind of like, well, you. You know, someone has launched you out of a gun here. What are you going to do now? You know, so the article, we do the concert, uh, Jazz for Peace, the, then the press comes out. Delarada starts out show with Jazz for Peace, you know what I mean? So like, psh, I get this other, and I'm like, okay, boink, what am I going to do now? You know, so a couple of things. I started doing some little concerts around New York City uh, to help some outstanding causes. I figured this must be at least a dozen outstanding causes in New York City, you know? Maybe I'll help like six of them, and then, you know, I'll call it macaroni, you know? I'll wrap this thing up, because, you know, I don't know what the heck. I've already, we've already gone a long ways, in my opinion, you know? But no, there's that, and then that leads to more, con then there's more, I, I didn't realize there were 60,000 nonprofits in New York City, <laughs> you know what I mean? So now I really got my hands full. There's a venue that kind of came up out of the blue. And th this is all these crazy stories, you know. I, I mean, I only know you, I know you only got a half an hour, but unfortunately, uh, you know, one it's like I said, one led to another, led to another. Jazzapiece eventually uh, 
became like in terms of its sustainable progress, it became three things. One is an instrument donation program that helps uh, children all over the world and adults that are underprivileged. Uh, just with my belief that, you know, if I'm going to give you a weapon and that's a musical instrument, you know what I mean? I'll give you a weapon. Okay. And you can fire a musical instrument at people because that is going to, that is going to, um, it's going to, your intellect, it stimulates your intellect. You know what I mean? It just, and there's all these other positive things that I would take me all day to tell you, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, it, it's a weapon of good, a musical instrument. So, you know, we want, if, if you're, if you're underprivileged or an adult, then we have, um, the, uh, music education in the schools. We want to bring music back into the schools. I mean, what is this crazy idea of cutting music from the schools? I know. I mean, Don't get me started. <laughs> right. I mean, where, and then you see the money they come up with for these other ridiculous I sport know. projects, you know, I, I mean, so beyond started. ridiculous, they've got billions of billions, you know, I mean, it's so bizarre. Then the school, you know, now nah, we got, to, you know, three pencils instead of four pencils. I mean, what are you talking about? So, you know, we want to bring music back to the schools. The other one is the big one. That's the benefit concert series. And that has helped over 850 of the world's most outstanding causes all over the world, uh, you know, nine times just to Africa alone, including the 20th anniversary of our United Nations event, which I didn't even tell you about that. But the other thing I told my manager was, you know, we do a few little concerts around New York City. Hey, why don't you call over the United Nations? And you can imagine the look I'm getting from her when she's telling me this. <laughs> you freaking nuts. You know, why don't you call over the United Nations? Call over there. And just show them my information because I had built up quite a bit of thing. You know, here's an, all right, he's, this guy's not some nutcase. Off, he's not, a, you know, someone just got off a bar stool. This is a person who's done all of these things. Now he's written this poem. Now he's done this. He wants to bring Israeli, Palestinian, and American jazz musicians to the United Nations to show how we can, yeah, how we can really. And she did that. And she said, well, well who do I call? I said, listen, you just got to, when you have a break in the action, just dial the number. Just they'll direct you here. They'll direct who that knows how many, you know, they'll probably direct you their home office in Scottsdale, Arizona, as uh, <laughs> was it Dave Letterman used to say that. Who the hell next we're going to get directed? But just follow it along, please, you know, because I think it would be a big thing, you know, if you did something like that. So because I've, I've had Israeli, Palestinian, I've had them. I played with them in, in homes and places. They don't look like they're fighting at all. You know what no. I mean? bandstand there's no they're getting along swimmingly on the bandstand i'll tell you that so now she uh one day you know she comes up to me and she's like hey uh so you know this thing in um you, you're going to take the euro rail when you get to paris then you got to go to uh, milan then you're going to this thing in uh, uh luxembourg and that's good blah 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 someone's going to meet you here and take you to croatia i mean it was this kind of thing and oh and that united nations thing yeah th they want to do that so I'm like, okay, you know, I, nice of you to just lump this all together, but you know, <laughs> so anyway, you know, I went through with it. And like I said, I said, listen, we need a, you know, I think this guy is from, pa I think he's column. I think he's from, you know, Palestine. Or he was from Lebanon, a percussion player. Now you got to get, somebody's got to be from Israel. You know what I mean? There was a bass player. So we got that happening. Then I put people from other, you know, other, uh, what other continents, you know, round the band out and did that. Well, you know, um, we put a press release out for that. Nobody showed up to that thing, you know, except the people at the United Nations anyway, right. but you know, they don't pay attention. I didn't know they paid no attention to peace whatsoever. I mean, they really, no, they don't, they don't, yeah, they want war. That's so well, that's, where that, the money, <laughs> that's where the money is, right? right? No money in peace. So, um, so anyway, uh, but as the years roll on, people started, you know, acknowledging and now mentioning that United Nations event and referring to it. Uh, and, you know, when I hit my 500th concert, which was, I was hoping to retire at 500 events, which was enough for me, six would have was enough at the first, but now it's 500 is enough. Then I get a letter from Barack Obama at the 500th. So, you know, what am I going to do now? So that's when we started going all around the world. Wow. Amazing story. Yeah. And, and, what is it that you find most exciting about what you do? Well, one thing that's really just really exciting for me and that very few people I know get to do, and I want it, I want, if I could trailblaze a way for people to do that, I would. And that is to bring their skill and their mastery or their skill, you know, what they've studied, their studies, their intellect, what they've developed, their, their human development 
with merge it with their personal development. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I really think people's hearts trump all of these kinds of absurdities that are holding us back. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I literally get to stand up for outstanding causes. And in all honesty, I'm readily convinced that if we were to, you know, instead of having a zillion nonprofits, if we were able to recognize the very, the most dedicated, the ones that are really the most dedicated at solving our problems and help them, then by helping those who are helping others, um, it's amazing what the results could be. So I get to do that. I get to unite, you know, both the art, my art, you know, but what, what my creative, my creativity with uh, the way I actually feel in my heart as a person, you know, and, and actually uh, kind of give something to human, feel like I'm playing a part, a role, you know, because all of us deep down inside want to solve these problems, but wouldn't it be nice if we could play a part? But what I want to do with Jazz for Peace is let everyone, I want to somehow convince everyone that you can play a part with Jazz for Peace. There is a point of entry with what we do for anybody, and I mean you, you know what I mean? Like everybody, nobody cannot, even, let's say you, I mean, you you know, you love jazz, you, you study it, you come across some outstanding cause over there, I think in Massachusetts where you are. Now, and I'm, you're in, like, I'm in California you? and I've got a cause for you, Prisoner yeah. of Peace. What is it? Prisoner of Peace, I'm oh, the co-founder. We, we go into maximum security prisons and teach murderers how to become peacemakers. So this is such a candidate for a Jazz for Peace event. I can, I, because here's the thing, let's look at you, okay? Number one, you are for sure underpublicized because I've never heard of you. Right, no, so we are. You're, not, you're underpublicized. That's, you know, that's like your exhibit A for under, a great outstanding cause is underpublicized. You're underpublicized. You're under, you don't have sponsors probably. And if you, no. even if you had a few, you need more sponsors. You might have none because most of them don't have none. You need to, you're underpublicized, you're underfunded, you're not you're undersponsored. You need to thank and reward the few people that are on your side. A lot of sometimes these people are exhausted. They're probably on life support because they're the only ones helping that organization, and and they always have to go to the same well for water every time. We want to we we you know we give a big hug to those people and reward them, thank them, and rejuvenate them as VIP guests of honor. That's the roots of the tree. And then we expand that and bring more people into your organization, which believe me, the people who support you are so happy to see new blood coming in, helping them, you right. know? So we do that. That's the roots of the tree. It's called an empowerment tree that we grow. So you, that grows the roots, okay? That base of thanking, re rewarding your supporters and expanding that to some, maybe hopefully some of their friends, some of their people that they've wanted to bring in all along, never had the opportunity. We bring them all in their VIP guests of honor. They're getting red carpet treatment. They're having a ball. They're not lifting anything. You know what I mean? Except maybe their, you know, their cup or their drink or their food. So now, you know, VIP meet and greet ceremony. They're all meeting. They're having a great time. They, they love the concert. They love everything about it. And then they really love your, you and your organization at the end of this concert as much as they love you before, hopefully more. Now we can grow the rest because we have a confirmed event at no cost to you, by the way, that's what we provide. And the staffing and the guidance and all of the expertise to make it a success. Because a lot of organizations, they never had a fund. Even if you gave them a fundraiser, they'd, you know, they wouldn't know what to do with it. You know what I mean? We will guide that to the finish line so that you have the, some of these branches. One of the branches is sponsors at the local level. We get local businesses involved. Some of these businesses tell me, the heck, these people are like five houses down and they've been around for 10 minutes. I never heard of them. Well, yeah, they never heard of you, never heard, but now I want you with them every year, please. You know, you guys be friends, go out, do things together and help this organization every year, not just today. So we got that, we got, that's a branch, publicity and awareness. It's another branch, getting the word out. Jazz for Peace gets, local, national, international, publicity and awareness for that cause. Wow. And that lasts, people will contact you. Hey, you know, you're the, yeah, you're the Jazz for Peace event. Yeah, in California, yeah, we heard about that, blah, blah, blah. These are all things that, again, sustainable. Now we go up to, at that point, we can go to bigger sponsors because, and what most organizations don't know, now you are a, you're an asset to them not the other way around. Most people used to come up to me, yeah, we're going to go up to the biggest one. And if they say no, we're going to die on the vine. No, no, no. That's not the way to do it. We're going to get everything together so that they can't say no. You know, we're going to make them an offer they can't refuse as one of my friends who was in The Sopranos used to tell me. So, you know, 
we it's funny because i did meet one of those guys out in the street he's a jazz for peace fan but anyway um uh so so now we've got that now we can go guess where we go now new and prestigious supporters and like i said the reason uh i mentioned barack obama i could mention that tons of them tons of people I, I told you ralph nader another one ralph nader came on board from a uh, from a uh injury prevention organization that we were wow. helping so that was the synergy you see what i mean uh, Barack Obama, he came on because of an organization in Chicago, which was his jurisdiction when he was a senator, which he was a senator. And it's also a cause that he feels very powerfully about. So, you know what I mean? So we find the synergy and believe me, what you're doing, there's somebody out there, rich and famous or whatever, or prestigious or just a wonderful human being uh, that that is well known, who has a special place in his heart for your cause. And that's how we do it. And once they look at Jazz for Peace, they're like, hey, that Jazz for Peace ain't messing around. I they're they're serious. They they they're delivering something to me that I believe in. And I believe Jazz for Peace because they got, you know, they've got 850 of these. What an amazing, amazing thing you do. I mean, I'm I'm kind of sitting here just stunned and shocked. And it's I, it's gotta be extremely gratifying to you. Well, it's gratifying. Now that here comes the heartbreak, I have to tell you. It's oh, of course. Yeah, because it's heartbreaking because here I am, you're getting it and we're getting that, right? But here's the problem. All the, everybody else, I've only, you know, you're, we're, this is only one person now. You see what I mean? There's no way I could go to all 808.4 billion people on this planet and have this conversation. That's and right. that's the sad thing is that they go out after this, you know, the people that I have these amazing conversations, well, they go out and when they, they turn on their news, they don't get Jazz for Peace news, which, you know, I wish there was a Jazz for Peace channel. Instead, right. they get all of this ridiculous, right. the most ridiculous thing they get is a bunch of people who actually have some intelligence now and then and demonstrate some intelligence, yet have no clue that there has never been a time in history where we tried to solve our problems without the arts and culture, as we're doing now. Right. Well, this guy, I'm going to do it. I'm, we're going to cut this. We're going to cut. No, no, no. When you guys are ready, you're going to bring the arts and culture into this because it's almost like, you know, we're going to win a world championship without, you know, the Bulls are going to win. We're going to take Michael Jordan. We're going to put him on the bench and we're going to win a championship. No, that's not going to happen. Well, you got to play that guy. And we got to play the arts and culture card if we want to solve any of these problems. I absolutely agree. Amazing. Okay, well, we'll talk. <laughs> Rick, you know, 30 minutes is gone. I mean, it's kind of incredible how fast it goes when you, I get somebody like you. Um, one more question, we'll wrap it up. Tell us one thing about yourself that we wouldn't know unless you revealed it to us. Well, you know, someone, someone asked that recently. Um, you know, the thing is, what a lot of people don't know is that um, basically uh, what what we do is just a natural process and it all uh, it kind of lets the game come to us. So we're not really going out and do, uh, you know, executing this. We're, we're taking the option that comes to us. And so when it comes to like the empowerment tree that we grow, people don't realize how simple it is. So basically, because they look at me and say, they might see me play complex things on the piano, but a lot of that comes from a simple motive, you know, da, 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 when I talk to Beethoven, that's just two notes. One of them played three times, yet he made a whole symphony. So with, with us, we actually start fundraising with a comment. So a person can say, you know, uh, I talked to the founder the other day and we have a charity, it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. Doug Knoll, send that into jet, info at jazzerbeast.org. He sends that in that tree that is a seedling right there for wow. an empowerment tree and all we do is try to grow it grow that comment into all the things that i just explained mm -hmm. so that's what i wish people that don't know did know all right well we're going to make sure we get the word out right i really appreciate your time today i love your music i love your energy i love your mission uh i am so glad to have met you thank you so much for taking your time to be on the show today rick my pleasure doug